What's up YouTube? All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about add match trigonometry, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna start from the very basics. Now, a lot of the trigonometry in add maths, as far as the basics are concerned, is the same as math, right? We have trigonometric functions such as sine, cos, and tan. So the first thing that we're gonna study are the three trigonometric ratios that sine theta is equals to opposite upon hypotenuse, cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan theta is equal to opposite upon adjacent, right? So these are the three trigonometric ratios that we all must remember at all times. Now, so what's the application of these trigonometric functions in ADMATS? Well, you may come across a question like this. Let's, let's do an example. You may come across a question like this, which says that sine theta is equal to 3 upon 5 and the question may ask you to figure out what cos theta is equal to and the question may ask you to figure out what tan theta is equal to all right so the easiest way to do this is with the help of our triangle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a triangle and considering that sine theta equals 3 upon 5 so that means my opposite length is 3 and my hypotenuse length is 5 so the ang the length opposite of theta is 3 and the length opposite of 90 degree, which is the hypotenuse length is 5. So using Pythagoras theorem, I can very conveniently figure out what the adjacent length is. So for some time, let's just call it x. So I'm sure we all know what Pythagoras theorem is. So x squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. So x squared equals 25 minus 9 x squared equals 16, so x equals 4. Only plus 4 because we're dealing with length, so we can't take a negative value. All right, so if I want to figure out cos theta, doing this was very necessary because cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's my adjacent length? The adjacent length is 4. What's the hypotenuse length? The hypotenuse length is 5. So cos theta is going to be equal to 4 divided by 5. Now what about tan theta? Tan theta is going to be equal to opposite divided by the adjacent length. So the opposite length is 3 and the adjacent length is 4. Now I should point out the adjacent length is basically the length that is between the angle that we're considering and the 90 degree angle. And the opposite length, uh, well it's pretty self-explanatory, is the length opposite of theta. The hypotenuse length is the length opposite of 90 degree and it is also the longest length in a triangle. All right, so this was the very first concept that we learned in trigonometry and ad maths. Now we're gonna build up on it gradually. Now the second most important concept in ad math trigonometry is the concept of a complementary angle identity. Now, what are complementary angles? I think we should discuss that first. Complementary angles are angles that sum up to 90 degrees. So, for example, 30 and 60 are complementary angles, 50 and 40 are complementary angles, and you get the point. So, now, according to this, is this identity, and I want you to keep your calculators handy so we can, you know, cross-check them. So, this identity says that sine of 90 minus theta is going to be equal to cos theta and this also says that cos of 90 minus theta is going to be equal to sin theta all right now what are they exactly 90 minus theta and theta are complementary angles in the sense that when i add them up i'm going to get a sum of 90 degrees so let's test this out so i want you to figure out in your calculator what sine 30 is and i also want you to figure out in your calculator what the cosine of the complementary angle of 30. Now, what do I mean by that? What do you think will complement 30? I mean, not the complement that you're thinking of, the complement in the sense like, what should I add to bump it, to make it 90 degrees? And I should add 60. So that means sine 30 is gonna be equal to cos 60. And you can verify that in your calculator, that sine 30 is equals to half, and cos 60 is also equal to half, all right? Well, it may be a coincidence. Uh, let's further try it out. Let's say I wanna figure out what sine 20 is, all right? Now, I don't remember the value of sine 20, but I'm sure you have a calculator with you. So you're going to notice that sine 20 is the same as cos 70, all right? Whatever sine 20 turns out to be, you'll notice that cos 70 is exactly the same. There's one value that I do remember, and that is cos 45, all right? So if you, if you figure out what cos 45 is equal to, and if you also figure out what sine 45 is equal to, now why 45, 45? Because 45, 45 are complementary angles. So you're going to notice that cos 45 is equal to root 2 upon 2 and sine 45 is also equal to root 2 upon 2. Now the third complementary angle identity involves tan. So tan of 90 minus theta is equal to 1 over tan theta in the sense that say you have tan 60 here, right? This is going to be equal to 
1 over tan. Now, the angle that I'm going to fix here is going to be the complementary angle of 60. So that means this is going to be equal to 1 upon tan 30. Now, you can work this out in your calculator and further verify it. And let's just do another example. Say you have tan 70. So you know what tan 70 is also going to be equal to? It's going to be equal to 1 over tan of the complementary angle of 70. So that means this is going to be equal to 1 over tan 20. Again, you can verify this in your calculator and you'll notice that they're exactly the same. Now, what kind of questions can we come across? The kind of questions that you and I may come across are, the question may ask us that, uh, this is going to be example two. Now to further cement this concept, the complementary angle identity concept. I've written here an example question. And remember, we're gonna solve this without a calculator, right? The question will specify that you need to solve this without using a calculator. Now, sine 65 and cos 25. Now, if you notice 65 and 25 are special numbers in the sense that if I sum them up, I get 90 degrees. So what that, what that basically means is, if I wish to write sine 65 as cos of some value, I can do that very conveniently. And how can I do that? The angle here is 65. So if I want to know what sine 65 is equal to in terms of cos, so that means the angle that I need to fix here should be the complementary angle of 65, which is going to be 25. So what happens then? The numerator from sine 65 turns to cos 25 and the denominator, well, I'll just leave it as it is. I mean, it would be pointless to change the denominator and the sign because that way we'll just keep on going in circles. So cos 25 over cos 25. So these two get canceled out and your answer is equal to one. So these are the kind of questions that you may come across that deal with the concept of complementary angle identities. So here's another example, example 2b, that involves uh, the concept of complementary angle identities. And we have to figure out tan 75 times tan 15, again, without using a calculator. So again, 75 and 15 are special numbers in the sense that if you sum them up, you get 90 degrees. So that means what I can do is, I can let tan 75 be as it is. And if I write tan 15, if I, if I use the identity, this identity, that tan of 90 minus theta is going to be equal to 1 over tan theta. So what I can do is, I can change this tan 15 to 1 over tan of the complementary angle of 15. Now what will be the complementary angle of 15? That's going to be equal to 75. So you notice what happens then? I'm sure you can see where this is going. Tan 75 and tan 75 get cancelled out and your answer turns out to be 1. All right. So this was another example that involves complementary angle identities and I did this to further cement the concept. So I hope it's clear now. All right, so the third concept is perhaps the most important one. And that's the concept that involves theta and alpha. Now let's talk about theta first. So theta basically is an angle that we measure. It could be in any of the four quadrants, first, second, third, fourth, all right? Now, the, one, the first thing that you have to remember about theta is that it is always measured from the positive horizontal axis, all right? This will always be our starting point, the positive horizontal axis. Okay, so I've written key point number one here is that it's always measured from the positive horizontal axis. Now, the thing with theta is that you need to be specific about the direction in which you're going. For example, you can either go in a, in a counterclockwise direction or you can go in a clockwise direction. Now you have to distinguish and we're gonna do that with the help of the sign that we're going to use. Now theta is positive if we go in an anti-clockwise direction or in a counterclockwise direction and it's negative if we go in a clockwise direction, right? So remember, if we go in an anti-clockwise direction, it's positive. If you go in, an, uh, in, a, in a clockwise direction, it's negative. I know this may sound counterintuitive in the sense that shouldn't clockwise be positive and anti-clockwise be negative? No, that's not the case. It's the same way that we measure or it's the same way that we number our quadrants. First, second, third, fourth, it's they're increasing in this direction and the same story applies with theta that it in increases in a uh, anti-clockwise direction. And if you go in a clockwise direction, it's gonna be negative. So let's write this down. All right, so here I've written that it's positive if, we, if it's anti-clockwise and it's negative if it's clockwise. I hope you guys can read my handwriting. There's nothing I can do about it by now, but anyway. Okay, now, now at this point, I should mention that why do we always start from the positive horizontal axis is because as far as degrees are concerned, this value is always zero. Now again, 
if we go in a in an anti clockwise direction so this is, is going to be equal to 90 degrees this is going to be equal to 180 degrees and this is going to be equal to 270 degrees and once you're back to the starting point that means it is equal to 360 degrees but that is if we move in a in, in an anti clockwise direction so if we go in a in a clockwise direction this is going to be equal to 90 degrees but since we have come in a clockwise direction it's going to be negative 90 and for the same reason this is going to be equal to minus 180 this is going to be equal to minus 270 and this is going to be equal to negative 360 degrees all right so that was the concept of theta now let's talk about alpha now the thing about alpha is you may have you may have heard of it as basic angle and yes that's another name for basic uh, that's another name for alpha now the properties about alpha are very simple is that uh, as far as alpha is concerned it's going to be always always positive all right it is never going to be equal to a negative value number two is that it will always be acute all right in value it's always going to be an acute angle in the sense that it will always be between 0 and 90. Now number 3 is the most important point. Now alpha is basically the angle that is formed between any line and the horizontal axis right. What's alpha? Alpha is the angle that's formed between any line and the horizontal axis. So this right here is the alpha in the first quadrant and again we have a line in the second quadrant and we have the horizontal axis so this is going to be equal to alpha. Then again we have a horizontal axis and line in the third quadrant so this is going to be alpha and this is going to be alpha. Now they may or may not be equal, may or may not be same in value, it depends on whether this is a straight line or whether you have two different angles, alright that comes later. So right now you just have to remember that it is always measured from the horizontal axis. Alright, so here we have example 3a where we're given a certain value of theta and our job is to find alpha. Alright, this is just to further cement the concept and the properties that we've learned about theta and alpha. Now, since theta is positive, so that means I'm going to start from the positive horizontal axis and I'm going to move in an anti-clockwise direction. Yeah. So, 150 degrees is obviously going to be somewhere in the second and the... Uh, so 150 degrees is obviously going to be somewhere in the second quadrant. All right, so I'm going to keep on going, keep on going till I've made approximately an angle of 150 degrees. So this right here is equal to the value of theta. Now our job is to figure out the value of alpha. Now alpha, as we know, is always the angle that's measured from the horizontal axis. So alpha is going to be equal to this angle. Now what do you think this angle is going to be equal to? Since this is a straight line, the sum of angles in a straight line are 180. So this obviously is going to be equal to 30 degrees. Alright, so here I have another example where I've taken the value of theta as negative 200. Now we have to find alpha. So what I'm going to do is, since it's negative, that means I'm going to move in a clockwise direction. So if I, for some time, just ignore the sign, and I know that I have to move in a clockwise direction till I make 200 degrees. So that means I'm going to end up, so this is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and 200, uh, 200 degrees. So this is going to take me to the second quadrant. Now what I have to do is I have to figure out the value of alpha. Now I know from the properties of alpha that it is the angle that's measured from the horizontal axis. So if you pay close attention, we know that till here in value, forget the sign for a minute, in value it's going to be equal to 180 degrees and till here it's going to be equal to 200 degrees. So what do I have to do? I have to from 200 degrees subtract 180 degrees just so that I can get this remaining portion all right so this remaining portion as you can see is going to be equal to 200 minus 180 which is equal to 20 degrees now since we're talking about alpha we don't have to worry about whether it's going to be positive or negative it's going to be always positive and it's always be an acute angle all right so I hope that's clear so here's example 4 